today I want to follow up with a better example that I talked about uh, in the previous video about Dynamixels. Um, we're going to still be talking about the AX12s right here. And what we have now, though, is essentially a little arm. This is a very simple example of a robot arm. Not a whole lot going on with it, um, but it's enough to do some tests and demonstrate some capabilities. Now, it didn't take very long to assemble this. Uh, I took, if you'll see right here, a fairly simple bracket, and I just attached it with a plate to some 4020 uh, extruded aluminum and then down to a base plate. Then a, an AX12 is mounted just like this with a small, there's a small hub on the bottom, a cheap plastic thing. It works well enough for our demo. And what we have here are two Dynamixel servos connected end to end. And to do that, I just used these little metal plates and took two of them, attached them together like that, attached them to the servos. It's actually a very snug fit. And put two servos end to end. Then on the end of that, we have another one of these little brackets a longer version, and from there it's attached to a simple gripper. Um, it's available from Truss and Robotics for $25, and it's fairly decent. Um, does what I need to do, need it to do. I just really wanted something to uh, work with and get used to programming them uh, before going on to building something more complicated. Now let's see um, how this works. We need to now connect this up and do something with it. So here we have a Raspberry Pi and we have the Dynamixel uh, USB to AX2 uh, or whatever this thing is, uh, the little controller here plugged in. And that is wired up to the what they call their uh, power hub. And as I showed before, that just carries the data signals from the uh, little interface board and merges in the 12 volt power coming in through the barrel jack and then sends it back out to the uh, Dynamixel servos themselves. Now the Raspberry Pi is connected to a breakout, a little simple breakout circuit here. And there's not much going on. Um, what we really have here are just a small set of a half dozen buttons or so that we can use to kind of control the arm. So here we have a small set of buttons. Um, these four are for memorized positions that the system has learned or can learn as we go along. And the red button here will allow us to teach the arm different positions. So I press learn, manually position the arm, and then press the appropriate button for that, that I want it to learn that position for. So, if we want to teach the robot a position, I'm going to use this position right here. I've pressed button 1 to learn it, and so I press the learn button and position the arm, then press button 1 to learn it. Now, the servos fight me when I try to move them because they're powered up. But if I press the learn button, I set it to zero out the uh, torque to them, it's still a little stiff, but it works okay. And so we'll move to this position for uh, position two and press learn. And it's, it's got a little jitter in it. I'm not sure what's up with the program. We'll position, learn position number three. We'll call that about here. And we'll learn position four. Put that back here. All right, it's got four positions. And as I press the buttons, there's one. You see it moved to position one. Press button two and it goes to two. Button three. And button four. Now let's use that one extra tall button that I didn't explain and do something interesting. So here we have a sort of a simple demo. Uh, we can place an item in the gripper and then press the next button, that was the last button that I had not explained, the gripper will close with low torque 
and it will stop when it encounters the resistance of the object. Then it will read the position of the servo and from that it can infer the diameter of what's in the gripper. Then it's going to make a decision based on that and carry it to one of these bins. So we start. This is the 9mm bin which was position 2. Here's a 40 caliber cartridge and if I press next it closes, figures that out and goes over to the next to bin uh, 3 which it has been taught is the 40 cal bin. And then here's a 45 case and if I press next takes the diameter and goes off to position 4. That's it. Uh, very fairly straightforward uh, to build this. The programming is a little more complicated to say the least. Um, I went a lot further than I certainly had anticipated going on this program. I don't know if this source code is going to come through, but I created a class for the ARM and it has a variety of little parameters for uh, the servos for each joint. What Dynamixel servo it is, one, two, three, etc. Torque levels that should be used, position limits, and things like that. And then implemented a small set of functions like go to position or is it at a goal position? Is it where it's supposed to be? Then a simple program over here makes various, just runs it through. Python commands uh, have it interrupt the, uh, accept the interrupts and then perform the particular function such as oh, learning the position or moving to the position. And then if the, the uh, next button is pressed, it's very simple, it just measures the case uh, which is all that does is pretty much close the gripper and then it determines the case type and from that it which it's using a small list of calibers uh, a small list of cases that it knows the diameters of and it also knows which position button one two button two three or four that it should be carried to and then it delivers the case once it's figured it out from there, it returns back to home, and we're done. It's a fairly simple routine, uh, nothing much going on. It took a little while to uh, figure out how to make it all work, but all the commands are just, all the things we're doing here are just compilations of very simple commands for these uh, Dynamixel servos. Things to set the torque level, okay? There's a there's in this library that we're using it has various uh, enumerations that uh, know what the torque limit command is it has that address register for the torque limit. So what we're using is the uh, PyX12 library, and it works pretty well. It took a little bit of work to figure it out, but it wasn't bad. So a few hours of programming, uh, making some mistakes. Uh, there were a couple of issues that came up. Um, I had this arm working just perfectly and I would have done this video last night except that for some reason this servo kind of stopped working. Actually both of these stopped working and this would, would, would work and I don't, didn't know why. So after some messing around I figured out that this one was not working anymore. This servo had died. So I took the arm apart put in an, another servo. So this is the bad servo and it's it's marked servo number two, one, two. And after it sat for a while, I hooked it back straight up to uh, the Dynamixel Wizard software with nothing else going on. And when I searched, this showed up as servo number one. So some errant command through uh, the library had told this to change its, um, to change its address from servo 2 to servo 1 and since there were two servo 1's I think it was jamming up communication for both of these and leaving only the gripper running. So there are 
little oddities with these. I'm still figuring them out. They can be a little flaky. But overall, it's been really neat. Uh, it was fun to, fun to build that and kind of neat to play with. So uh, a lot of fun making it do its little thing. Hope you enjoyed that. Got a bigger arm in progress right now. And so I'll have something, a much more complicated machine to show very soon. It's a similar arm, but a little bigger.